Dealing with the strong man, part nine, facing the onslaught. And pray in the spirit on all occasions with all kinds of prayers and requests. With this in mind, be alert and always keep on praying for all the saints. Pray also for me, that whatever I open my mouth, words may be given me, so that I will fiercely make known the mysteries of the gospel, for which I am the an ambassador in chains. Pray that I may declare it fiercely as I should. Ephesians six eighteen through 20 One night, John Patone and his wife, a missionary couple in the New Hebrides Island, were awakened by chance outside their mission station. Looking out, they saw that scores of hostile islanders had surrounded the station with torches intent on burning the place down and killing the missionary couple. The patents got down on their knees and prayed throughout the night asking Yahuwah to deliver them. The tense dark hours passed, yet the islanders kept their distance. Finally, around daybreak, the patents looked out the window and the hostile tribesmen were gone. John Patton was baffled. There seems to be nothing preventing the islands from attacking, yet no attack came. Patton didn't find out why the islands left so mistressly until a year later. When the chief of the tribe was one to Yahuwah, Yahushua, remember the night-long siege of a year before, John Patton asked the newly converted chief why the tribesmen had departed instead of burning a mission station to the ground. We were afraid of the men who were with you. The chief replied, What men? asked Patton. There were all hundred tall men around the mission house that night, said the chief. Their clothing shone with light, and they had swords in their hands. We knew that they would never let us harm you, so we went back to our village. This is spiritual warfare at its most extreme. Yahuwah does not always have to intervene in such a dramatic way on behalf of his children. Yet the battle was just as real, just as deadly for you and me in our everyday lives as it was that night for the patents in a mission station on the new hybrid islands. You and I are hemmed in by enemies every day, but Yahuwah has provided a defense for us that will enable us to stand against the schemes and the flaming arrows of the enemy. The Apostle Paul has listed for us three steps we must take in order to be strong in Yahuwah and to resist the attacks of Satan. 1. Put on the armor of Yahuwah. Put on the whole armor so that you may be able to stand against the schemes of the devil. As we had seen, putting on the armor of Yahuwah is far from being merely figurative. It is a practical step that you must take in order to defend yourself against the devil's attacks. It means remembering what Yahushua is to you and thinking through the implications of that relationship in terms of your present struggle and experience. Though putting on the armor of Yahuwah is a very practical step, it is something we do in the realm of our thought life. It is an adjustment of the attitude of your heart to reality to the things as they really are. It is the act of thinking through the implications of the facts revealed in Yahuwah's word. Most of our problems in life stem from the fact that we do not see life as it really is. We suffer from illusions, from impaired visions, from limited perspective. This is why we desperately need to begin with the belt of truth, the revelation of the facts about life that we find in scripture. Life is what Yahuwah has declared it to be. When we face life on the realistic basis, we are able to live more effective, joyful, productive lives. We understand what is happening to us and why. We understand what is going on in the world and why, and we are able to aim ourselves for the battle that rages around us and within us, spiritual warfare. All this is part of the putting on the full armor of Yahuwah, of appropriating Yahuwah, our Messiah, Yeshia, and His strength so that we can live life realistically and effectively. We do all this in the realm of the thought life. When we are first learning to put on the full armor of Yahuwah, it takes time and thought and attention. But like any other endeavor in life, we improve with practice. Eventually, putting on the full armor of Yahuwah becomes a habit and it becomes natural. That's, after all, is why soldiers train so build soldierly habits so that survival tactics, defensive tactics, and offensive tactics become second nature. In the heat of the battle, a soldier does not want to have to think, what do I do now? 
were my checklist. What did my sergeant tell me to do in this situation? He wants to be able to act on instinct and carry on his training without hesitation. So it is with soldier of Yahuwah. When the devil presses his attack, we need to be ready to respond in a moment's notice, beginning with the belt of truth and finishing with the sword of the spirit. That's the kind of ready. This is the kind of ready response come only through continual practice, prayer, and awareness of the full arm of Yahuwah on a daily basis. Step 2. Pray. There is a very strong and powerful relationship between putting on the arm of Yahuwah and prayer. These two steps belong together. It is not enough to put on the arm of Yahuwah and you must also pray. It is not enough to pray. You must have also put on the arm of Yahuwah. It is not a case either or. It is a case of both and. Paul writes, And pray in the Spirit on all occasions with all kinds of prayer and requests. With this in mind, be alert and always keep on praying for all the saints. Pray also for me that whenever I open my mouth, my words may be given me so that I will fiercely make known the mysteries of the gospel for which I am an ambassador in chains. Pray that I may declare it fiercely as I should. Ephesians 6, 18-20 Stand firm. In the face of Satan's attack, we are to stand firm in our faith with the certain knowledge that the battle of Yahuwah, that is Yahuwah's, our faith is his victory, a victory that is already accomplished on the cross or on the tree was what overcomes the world. In this next and final chapter, we will explore what it means practically and biblically to stand firm. The place to start. Notice that the Apostle Paul in Ephesians 6 does not reverse the order of what we should do when we feel that attack of Satan. He does not instruct us to pray first and then put on the armor of Yahuwah. That is what we often try to do. And the result is a feeble and potent prayer life. This is great practical health here if we carefully follow the designated order of scripture. I think most believers in Yahuwah, if they are honest, have to confess that they are dissatisfied with their prayer life. They feel it is inadequate and perhaps infrequent. All of us at times struggle to improve ourselves. Sometimes we struggle to improve the quality as well as the quantity of our prayer lives. Sometimes we adopt schedules that we attempt to maintain where we develop long lists of names and projects and places that we try to remember in prayer or when attempt to discipline ourselves in some way to be a greater ministry in this realm. In other words, we begin with the doing what when we do that, we are starting in the wrong place. We are violating our basic human nature in doing it that way. The place to start is not with doing but with thinking. With the thinking. Now, I am not suggesting that there is no place for Christian discipline or believer discipline. There is. I am not suggesting that we won't need to take our will and put it to the test or the task and persevere in the hard work of prayer. There is a great need for that. But first, we should do what is involved in putting on the armor of Yahuwah. First, think through the implications of faith and then prayer will follow naturally much more easily. It will be thoughtful prayer, prayer that has meaning and relevance. Relevance. Isn't that the problem with much of our prayer? Our prayers are often so shallow and superficial. What is needed? Prayer should be an on growth of thoughtfulness about the implications of faith that adds depth and significance to it. Prayer should be pointed and purposeful. In Ephesians 6, Paul recognizes two categories of prayer which he designates all kinds of prayers and requests. All kinds of prayers, of course, is that widest clarification request is that specific plea for help or provision made in prayer. And if you take the whole range of Bible teaching on this great subject of prayer, you will find that the underlying of all biblical presentation of prayer is that the idea it is conversation with Yahuwah. That is all it is. Prayer is simply conversing with Yahuwah. Family talk. When thinking about prayer, it is crucial to recall the position of a Christian or believer. He is a member of the family of Yahuwah. So prayer is not just a religious ritual. It is something more, much more real, much more profound. Prayer is family talk. It is a friendly, intimate, frank conversation with Yahuwah, our Eloah. We have the privilege of such unrestricted communication with Yahuwah. By reason of the close and intimate relationship we have entered into with Yahuwah. By his grace through faith in Yahushua, the Messiah, by faith in Messiah, some call Christ, we pass out of the realm of strangerhood toward Yahuwah and alienation from Yahuwah. We have passed into the intimate family circle of the children of Yahuwah. 
It is easy to talk within a family circle. And harm is done to family intimacy when family members maintain silence and refuse to talk. So this is the essential nature of what Paul calls all kinds of prayers. Prayers is nothing more, nothing more nor less than family talk, a conversation with our Father in heaven, Yahuwah. What Paul calls requests or prayers of a somewhat special nature, but again requests are also a form of family talk. The Apostle James says, you do not have because you do not ask, Yahuwah, James 4.2. In our conversation with Yahuwah, it is perfectly proper to ask because we are his children and he is our father. Paul is saying, after you have put on the arm of Yahuwah, after you have thought through the implications of your faith, then talk to Yahuwah about it. Tell him the whole thing. Tell him your reactions. Tell him how you feel. Describe experiences and reactions to these experiences and ask him for what you need. Prayer is often considered to be such a high and holy thing that it has to be carried on in some artificial language or resounding tone of voice. You hear this so frequently from the pulpit. Pastors adopt what has been applied as stained glass voice. They pray as though Yahuwah were far off in some distant corner or of the universe. I believe this sends a faulty message to people about what prayer truly is. It is important that we all understand that prayer is simply a conversation with our Father Yahuwah. It is what the Apostle Paul describes so beautifully in his letter to the Ephesians. Do not be anxious about anything, but in everything by prayer and petition, with thanksgiving, present your request to Yahuwah. Present it to Yahuwah. And the peace of Yahuwah, which transcends all understanding, will guard your hearts and your minds in Messiah Yahushua, as mentioned in Philippians 4, 6 through 7. That is a wonderful study in prayer. Paul is saying that there are three simple steps involved in prayer. 1. Do not worry or be anxious. Believers or Christian friend, do you hear what that says? Let go of your worries and anxieties. Turn them over to Yahuwah. This is one of the major problems in a believer or Christian living today. Anxiety not only hinders our prayer life, but it also makes us ineffective soldiers for Yahuwah, an ineffective witness for the gospel. Believers or Christians become either stumbling blocks to non-Christians or a glowing testimony and witness to the non-Christians depending on how they handle pressures and problems. A weary, anxious believer, Christian, gives the appearance that Yahuwah cannot be trusted and the gospel provides no help in times of pressure and trials. Since Yahuwah is trustworthy, then the believer Christians have nothing to worry about. He is in control. Since the gospel is true, believer Christian has nothing to be anxious about. All things ultimately work together for good in Yahuwah's perfect plan. That is why the believer or Christians are continually exhorted in the scriptures not to worry. The more we worry, the less faith we demonstrate. This is not to say that the believer or Christian should not be interested and concerned about life's problems, tra uh, tragedies, and injustices. The scriptures do not advocate a, st a stoic, indifferent approach to life. We must be a compassionate, concerned, and involved in life and the lives of people around us. We must care. But we demonstrate a lack of confidence in Yahuwah whenever we are anxious, fretful, and weary. Someone once said, I am so loaded down with worries that if one more thing goes wrong, this week it'll be two more weeks before I get around to worrying about it. Sometimes we make an artificial attempt to cure our worrying by sheer human willpower. As one poet has humorously put it, I've joined the new Don't Worry Club and now I hold my breath. I am so scared I am going to worry that I am worried half to death. But Paul says... Don't be anxious. Don't worry about anything. How is that possible? It is only possible when you have put on the armor of Yahuwah. Do not attempt it on any other basis. Worry comes from fear. And the only power that dissolves fear is recognizing the fact that Yahuwah is in control. The fact that Yahushua has already won the battle. The fact that we can trust Yahuwah to manage all events for our ultimate good and His ultimate plan, even tragedies, pain, and setbacks. When we put on the armor of Yahuwah, we face the facts as they are. We accept reality as it truly is. The next step Paul gives us for effective prayer is, pray about everything. You may wonder, is Yahuwah really interested in the little things as well as the big things? Of course he is. He tells us so. The hair is on our heads or numbered by him. Yahuwah is concerned about everything, even the little things, so don't hesitate to bring him any concern you have. Yahuwah is a loving Father, and He is intimately concerned about every aspect of our lives. The final step Paul gives us for effective prayer is this. 
the result is peace. Paul says that when we pray, the peace of Yahuwah, which transcends all understanding, will guard your hearts and your minds in Messiah Yahushua. That is the result of prayer, as Paul tells us in Ephesians. The peace of Yahuwah is a peace no one can understand or explain, a peace that comes to us despite our circumstances and which does not arise out of emotional events. It is supernatural in origin and nature. Can there be anything more relevant to the trouble and anxiety of this world than the peace of Yahuwah? No. The essential link. The inherited in prayer are three basic facts. One. When we pray, we recognize the existence of an invisible kingdom. When we would never pray at all if we did not have an awareness that someone is listening, that behind what is visible, there is an invisible kingdom. It is not far off in space somewhere. It is right here. It surrounds us on every side, every angle. We are constantly in touch with it, even though we do not always realize it. It lies behind a facet of life, and although the scriptures are exhorted to take heed of this, to reckon with it and deal with it, to acknowledge that it exists. Number two, we have confidence that the kingdom of Yahuwah is highly significant and that it directly affects our lives. Events in the visible realm are secretly motivated and driven by forces in the unseen realm. So, and here is a key point. If you want to change the visibilities, you must start with the invisibilities. This is why prayer is so crucial. We are engaged in spiritual warfare, so we must conduct that warfare in the spiritual realm, in the realm of Yahuwah, in the realm of prayer. 3. Prayer is an essential part of bringing Yahuwah's invisible power to bear on the life in the visible realm. The devil and his forces are fiercely dedicated to keeping human beings in the dark on this fact. The devil does not want you to know or believe that Yahuwah truly does answer prayer. So it is crucial that we underscore this fact. Prayer is purposeful and powerful because Yahuwah is purposeful and powerful. Yahuwah answers prayers. The devil has been very effective in blunting and obliterating this truth from the minds of people today. We often hear such phrases as, he, does, he doesn't have a prayer or there is nothing we can do now but pray. In other words, prayer is a last resort, a last ditch, a hopeless gesture, the last gaps when all other possibilities have been exalted. Satan laughs whenever prayer is depicted in that way. He loves it when people think of prayer as pitiful, pathetic, pointless gesture, and he hates it when people discover that prayer is directed access to limitless power of the one who formed the planets and hurled the stars through space. What an exhilarating thought. When we pray, Yahuwah listens. We make our request, Yahuwah acts. Prayer is an essential link to Yahuwah's active involvement in the world today. Without prayer, Yahuwah often does not work. He is a perfect gentleman, and he does not go where he is not invited. But with prayer, he always works. Hallelujah. Prayer according to the promises. We must immediately add and underscore this biblical truth. Yahuwah answers prayer according to his promises. There is a false concept of prayer held by many which suggests Yahuwah answers any kind of prayer no matter what you want or how you ask for it. This false teaching results in bitter disappointment and give rise to the widespread belief that prayer is e e ineffectual. But Yahuwah answers every prayer that is based upon his promises. Prayer does not start with us, it starts with Yahuwah. Yahuwah must say he will do something before we are free to ask him to do it. If Yahuwah were to say yes to all of our demands, he would not be Yahuwah. He would be our slave, a mere genie in a bottle. Instead of answering our prayers, he would be granting our wishes. That is neither a biblical nor a truthful description of how Yahuwah work at all. The Yahuwah of the Biblical Bible is both the sovereign creator and king of the universe, and he is a loving father, and that is how we must approach him. We should not presume to boss around the creator of the universe, and we should understand how a healthy father-child relationship works. No loving parent commits himself to giving his children anything they want or demand. Whether a loving parent makes it clear that he will do certain things for his children and do not do other things. 
within the scope of these parental promises and limits a loving parent would commit himself to answer his children's request. For example, a loving parent may say, I will grant your request for wholesome neutral snacks after school, but I will not grant your request for ice cream Sundays five times a day. I love you too much to grant a request that would harm your health. So it is with Yahuwah, he has given promises in that form the only proper basis for answer prayer. You and I may think that the request we have made of Yahuwah is perfectly reasonable. We may imagine that if he were truly loving, he would grant us the success or healing or blessing we ask for. But Yahuwah sees more clearly than we do. And Yahuwah may see as he did when Paul prayed to be healed of a physical ailment of thorn in the flesh, then even something as seemingly beneficial as a physical healing may not be Yahuwah's best for our lives. This is what Paul means when he reminds us and pray in the Spirit on all occasions with all kinds of prayer and requests. What does that mean to pray in the Spirit? This is an area of great misunderstanding. Many take this phrase to describe the emotions we should have when we pray. They think it is necessary to be greatly moved before prayer can be effectual, that we should pray with great emotionalism. Of course Yahuwah is involved with us on an emotional level and deep feelings are often a part of a vital prayer life. But emotionalism is not necessary to effective prayer, nor is emotionalism what Paul means when he urges us to pray in the Spirit. Quite simply, what Paul means is this, to pray in the Spirit is to pray according to the promises the Spirit has given, and it is based on the character of Yahuwah which the Spirit has made known. Yahuwah has never promised to grant our wishes, demand begging, pleading, or cravings. He has only promised to answer prayers that are prayed in the way that He has outlined for us in His promises. He answers such prayers invariably and without partiality. He is no respecter of persons, and He shows no favoritism in the matter of prayer. In the realm of our personal needs, those needs that call forth most of our prayers, such as the need for wisdom, or patience, or grace, or strength, or endurance, Yahuwah has promised us to answer immediately and abundantly. He always answers that type of prayer to the full extent of our need, and in precisely the time frame we need it, when not necessarily the same thing as the time frame we want or expect. Yahushua has made this promise to us. I ask and it will be given to you. Luke 11, 9. The Apostle Paul confronts us with the fact that we must take this matter of prayer seriously and learn what Yahuwah has promised. In other words, master this subject as you would master any other course of study you undertake. Scientists have mastered various areas in this realm of science. Teachers have become proficient at the art of teaching. Autisans have given time and study to their trade. In the same way, you must learn to master the order of prayer. Through prayer is the simplest thing in the world, merely a conversation with Yahuwah. It can also become the deepest and most profound experience in your life. As you grow in the practice and experience of prayer, you'll find that Yahuwah is utterly serious about prayer. Through this two-way communication between ourselves and Yahuwah, He makes His omnipresent and omniscient available to limit limited human beings to you and me in terms of specific promises he has made to us. When you learn to pray on this basics you will discover the exciting and unexpected things will constantly happen that is a quite but mighty power and work in your life, a power on which you can rely. And as you learn to pray in this way you'll find that a tremendous weapon, a mighty power influence your own life and the lives of others is put at your disposal. Open their eyes, Yahuwah, Yeshaya. We are not alone in this battle, this spiritual conflict with the unseen forces of evil. No, there are others around us who are weaker and younger in Christ, in Messiah, Yahushua, than we are. And there are still others who are stronger and more mature than we are. All of us are in, that, or in this mighty army of Yahuwah, fighting this battle shoulder to shoulder and side by side. We cannot put on the armor of Yahuwah for another person, but we can pray for that other person. We can call it enforcements. When we find a believer or a Christian brother or sister engaged in a struggle greater than themselves, we can share with them about the full armor of Yahuwah and help them to understand how to think through the penelope of armor Yahuwah has equipped us with.
we can be aware of others' problems and trials and we can pray for them. We are to pray that Yahuwah will embolden their hearts, strengthen their bodies, clear their minds, and open their eyes to the danger that swirls around them. We can pray that Yahuwah will supply them with the specific help and insight they need for the trial they are undergoing. Notice how Paul asks this for himself in this very same passage. Pray also for me, he writes, that whenever I open my mouth, words may be given me, so that I will fiercely make known the mysteries of the gospel which I am an ambassador in chains. Pray that I may declare it fiercely as I should, Ephesians 6, 19-20. Even this mighty apostle has a deep sense of his need for prayer. You find another notable example of Paul's desire for prayer in the closing verses of Romans 15, where he asks the believers or Christians to pray for these three specific needs, physical safety when he visits Jerusalem, a sensitive, tactful spirit when he speaks to believers and Christians there and in ultimate opportunity to visit the city of Rome. See Romans 15, 30, 32. Let me underscore this. Paul makes three specific requests and the record of scripture is that every one of those requests was answered exactly as Paul asked. In reading through the prayers of Paul, I find that he deals with many matters. But one thing recurs again and again throughout his prayers. A request that understanding of his fellow believers, Christians, will be enlightened. He repeatedly asks that the eyes of their minds, their intelligence, might be open. This repetition in the Apostles' Prayer indicate that the importance of int intelligently understanding life, distinguishing what is true from what is false, what is real, from what is phony. It also illustrates the power of the devil to blind and confuse us and to make things look very different from the way they really are. So the, the repeated prayer of the apostle is, Yahuwah, open their eyes that their understanding may be enlightened, that their intelligence may be clarified, that they may see things as they are. Ashaya, he bahu eta. In the letter of James, the importance of praying for others is forcefully underlined. My brothers, if one of you should wander from the truth and someone should bring back, remember this. Whoever turns a sinner from the error of his way will save him from death and cover over a multitude of sins. It's mentioned in James 5, 19 and 20. The prayer of another person can change the whole atmosphere of one person's life, oftentimes overnight. One Christmas Eve, my family and I were in the Sierra Nevada mountains of California in a little gold rush town called Twain Heart. When the sun went down, the landscape around us was dry and barren. A few brown leaves swirled down from the trees and it was typically bleak winter landscape. But when we awoke the next morning, it was transformed into a wonderland of beauty. Every horse line was softened, every block was covered. A fine inch snowfall had fallen during the night, and the whole landscape was quietly and marvelously transformed into a fairyland of delight. I have seen the same thing happen in the life of an individual with a stubborn, hardened, self-willed attitude towards the things of Yahuwah and his invisible reality. I have seen that person's heart soften and change by prayer alone performed secretly in the prayer closet of a faithful believer or a Christian. No words needed to be spoken and would never have been received by the person with the hardened heart. Prayer alone, the mysteries link between a faithful believer and the limitless power of our awesome Yahuwah was all that was required to perform that transformation. At times, such transformations can take place vi virtually overnight, but at the other times, it takes much longer. I know of people whose lives were changed only after some faithful prayer wars 
persevere on his or her knees for decades. But the change does come. Time is a factor that Yahuwah alone controls and he never puts a time limit on his instruction concerning prayer. He calls us to be faithful and constant in the ministry of prayer, both for ourselves and for one another. When we learn to pray as Yahuwah teaches us to pray, we release in our lives and in the lives of others the immense resources of Yahuwah. We invite Yahuwah to reach down into our lives and our world, supplying His strength, His power, His wisdom, His insight to heal the hurts, resolve the problems of this life, and win the battles of this life. Now prayer. Father, Abba, Yahuwah. I know so little about this mighty ministry of prayer. Yeshaya, teach me to pray. Forgive me for the way I have often looked at prayer as though it were unimportant, insignificant, and optional religious exercise as a last resort. Help me to see prayer as my vital lifeline to you and your mighty power. Help me to see reality especially the reality of prayer. Thank you, Yahuwah. In Yahushua's name, I give honor, glory, and praise to you that you are not only infinitely, infinitely powerful, you are also intimately involved in my life. I stand amazed that the Creator, Yahuwah, of the universe is also my Father, and that you invite me to climb into your lap and call you daddy. What grace you give me. What a privilege you offer me. What a wonderful and exhilarating gift it is to be able to converse with you. In the name of Yahushua, Yeshayahuahua, a great model of prayer. Amen.